Hi, in this video we're going to look at the definition of limit for multivariable functions. So up here at the top I've actually written the definition of limit that you would have seen in Calculus 1 or at least some version of something that's equivalent to this would be what you've seen. So there are actually a lot of definitions of limit that you looked at in Calc 1. You looked at one-sided limits, you looked at limits as x approaches a number and the outputs also approach a number. You also looked at definitions that had to do with x or y approaching infinity or maybe both. Um, but we're going to look here at the definition where x and y are both approaching numbers. So we're going to start with that. Uh, so I want to just dissect this definition from Calculus 1 just a little bit to make sure you're clear about that before we dig in and think about the one for multivariable functions. All right, so at the beginning here it says we've got this function defined on an open interval i containing x equals a except possibly at x equals a itself. So I'm going to draw a little picture here and think about what that means. Um, so we've got a function it's going to be defined on this open interval i containing x equals a. So I'll just draw some kind of arbitrary open interval there around x equals a. Basically what that means is that the domain of the function has to include that interval. So I'm going to draw a function where the domain does include that interval, but it does say except possibly at x equals a itself. So I'm going to draw my function so that there's not actually a point there at x equals a. Um, so this part here about the function being defined, that's about the domain of the function, including this open interval i around x equals a. And so basically that means we want this function to be defined all around x equals a. And uh, for single variable functions that we were looking at in Calc 1, that basically just means both sides of x equals a. And certainly if the domain of the function is maybe some closed interval that's even larger than what I drew, then it's also defined on some open interval that's inside that. So it just has to say basically that we want this function defined all around x equals a so we can consider approaching a from both directions from Calc 1. Uh, and then we define this limit where L is a real number. On my picture, L here would be about right there. So L is what the function outputs are approaching a number to mean that for every epsilon. So you might remember that epsilon is usually drawn as a distance here above and below that L value on the y-axis. There's an epsilon part of the definition here at the end that states that. Um, so I've got this L plus epsilon value and an L minus epsilon value above and below the L to mean that for every epsilon there exists some delta such that whenever x is in the interval and then this statement here is saying that x is not equal to a, that's what the zero part here is saying at the end, that x is not equal to a, but x is within delta units of a. So um, it says that whenever that happens, we are guaranteed that the function outputs will be within epsilon units of L. Okay, so I've drawn my epsilon units of L, that region that has uh, epsilon units above and below L on my picture here. And basically what I want to think about is how far away can I go from my point here, my x equals a, so that I'm ensured that the function outputs will stay in that interval, l plus epsilon, l minus epsilon. And so I drew, put a couple dots right there where it appears to go outside that interval. And I can use that to think about my delta distance here. So uh, if the function's not symmetric, remember that that delta is a distance on either side. So if one side is smaller, my picture is kind of hand drawn here, so it's a little bit difficult to tell, uh, but maybe the right side's a little bit smaller here. If my x points are in here, it will force the outputs to be within this strip, and that's what it means to say that we have this limit. All right, so what we want to think about here is how we're going to modify that for a function of two variables. So we could definitely modify it for functions of more variables. It's just the pictures get a little bit more difficult to draw. So we're going to start with this function of two variables to think about here. And what we want to define is this limit that I'm putting a box around right here, that when x, y is approaching a point a, b, the function outputs are approaching a number l. All right, so we need this function to be defined essentially all around the point a, b. Uh, here in two dimensions though, since the domain is two dimensional, uh, we would say on an open region, but that would be a region in the x, y plane. Uh, 
I don't need to write in the xy plane as part of my definition, um, but I'm just going to write that there to remind you that that would be an open region in the xy plane. Maybe I'll call that region r here. Uh, and so I have that function defined all around that point a, b, except remember the whole power of limits is when the function maybe isn't defined exactly at that point, except possibly at the point a, b itself. All right, so I'm going to put a point a, b and down here in the x, y plane. Uh, and basically what we've said at the beginning here, the domain of the function needs to include a region all around that point so that I can consider approaching that point basically from all directions. And then my function, I'm going to just draw some generic function here. My function needs to uh, include as its domain that region R that I've labeled down here in the xy plane. And the function may not actually be defined at my point AB. So I'm just going to draw up here on the surface of the function an open circle indicating that there may or may not actually be a point on the surface of the function at the point that would correspond to AB in the xy plane. All right, so we define this limit uh, to be L, where L is a real number. So just like in the single variable version, the L would be what the outputs are approaching in my picture here. So I'm drawing some little dashed lines to try to keep things lined up on my 3D picture. On my picture, it looks like L would be about right there, what the function outputs appear to be approaching as XY gets close to that point AB. Uh, where L is a real number to mean that for every epsilon there exists a delta such that whenever. Okay, so we want to think about what that next line is going to look like. I highlighted it in the single variable function definition up above here. And so we just want to think about how we're going to extend that for multivariable functions. So for the single variable function, the domain or the inputs were just numbers on our x-axis. Here, we're going to have xy as our inputs. And those need to be in that region r that we said has to be part of the domain. And, and then the next part here with the absolute values, those are really about distances. So essentially what I want to say here is that xy is not equal to the point AB, but xy is within delta units of AB. Okay, so on my picture here, what we would be looking for is a uh, region all around AB and we'd be looking at all the points that are within delta units of AB. So essentially what we're looking at there is a little circle in the xy plane of radius delta and all those points that are inside there. So this part is going to be the part that's really different from what we did before. Uh, so we're going to say that zero is less than and then here, since we're talking about distance in the xy plane, what I'm going to write here looks like distance formula. So that's distance formula saying that xy, the distance between the point xy and ab is going to have to be less than delta. So that part is a little bit different from what we did before. It looks different, but it means the same thing, that our input point is not at the point we're approaching, but it's within delta units of that point that we're approaching. And then we want to be guaranteed that the outputs will be within epsilon units of L. So really, if I had done this picture correctly, like I did for my other one, I should have drawn this epsilon interval first and then used that to find my delta interval. Uh, you want those outputs to be within epsilon units of L, so above and below L. And so what I'm looking for here is this delta region where any point that I choose in that delta region, when I figure out where the output of that function is, that that output is going to be between L plus epsilon and L minus epsilon. So since we're measuring that distance in the z direction there, just in a straight up and down direction, we can actually use the similar thing that we had in the other definition here, just that our function outputs minus L, the absolute value of that, is going to be less than epsilon. So the f of x, y values are within epsilon units of L. All right, so this is the formal definition. The basic idea here that you want to get from this definition is it's pretty much the same as the Calc 1 definition, except the part that I highlighted and what we wrote here. It really means the same thing as what you saw in the Calc 1 definition. It's just that I need to use a distance formula since we're talking about distances all around. The other thing that's important from this definition to note is that when you think about approaching that point A from the Calc 1 version, there's really 
really only two directions to approach A from, from the left and from the right. But if you think about this three-dimensional picture here for my function of two variables, there's really infinitely many directions that I need to be approaching that point AB from. And so that makes things a lot more complicated when I think about limits for multivariable functions, the idea that I have to consider really infinitely many different directions that I could approach AB as long as I'm in that little disk of radius delta in the XY plane. All right, there's a picture in your textbook that's drawn a little bit differently than this, but you might look at that and just make sure that you understand what they're trying to show on that picture and then try some problems to do with limits.